Hey, Lightning, have you heard? No! Zero, zero, zero! Mm -hmm. uh, no. The Truck Show. We're gonna show you what we know. We're gonna answer what the truck. Cause truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run. The Truck Show, oh, oh. It's The Truck Show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. This episode of The Truck Show podcast, Have You Heard? is proudly presented by Nissan with the Frontier, Titan, and Titan XD. Nissan has a truck for every need along with the legendary Nissan durability. Test drive your next truck at a local Nissan dealer today or point your browser to NissanUSA.com where you can use the build and price tool to configure a Nissan truck that fits your lifestyle. And when you're thinking about adding power or improving fuel economy, Banks has over 65 years of experience. Whether it's cold air intakes or exhaust systems, tuning, throttle control, charge air cooling, lubrication components, and much more, no one offers smarter, safer, 50-state emissions-compliant performance parts than Gale Banks. You'll find the best engineered parts for your truck at BanksPower.com. And when you're looking for quality, full synthetic lubrication for your truck, Amsoil has you covered with motor oil, lubricants and protectants, grease, additives, and more. Amsoil synthetic lubricants deliver wear protection, engine cleanliness, and fuel efficiency that conventional oils simply can't match. Find out how Amsoil synthetic lubricants can save you money and time by helping your vehicles run better and last longer than with conventional oils at Amsoil.com. When it comes to lubrication, Amsoil is the leader in synthetics. EGR now celebrating their 50th anniversary as a leading manufacturer of truck and SUV accessory products with headquarters right here in the good old US of A. As an Australian-owned, family-run business with humble beginnings, EGR is now a global leader in the automotive accessory industry. If you're looking for window visors, fender flares, tonneau covers, lights, hood guards, and more, you'll find them all at EGRUSA.com. Lighting, have you heard? I mean, no, no. No, huh? What you got? All right, so uh, some of my favorite magazine guys, Christian Hazel and Trent McGee. Uh, you may know them from uh, Peterson's Four Wheel and Off Road. So check this out. Um, they both are out of the motor trend sphere. Christian uh, got laid off not too long ago. And there's a little post uh, that Christian and Trent posted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it said, uh, all right, guys, I was waiting to have a couple more things in place, but we soft launched the site about a month ago, and some fans have already picked up on it. So here we go. If you uh, remember the 20-plus years of Ultimate Adventure. Yes. Well, now that they're outside the Motor Trend umbrella, Christian Hazel and Trent McGee are uh, reviving it as Unreal Adventure. <laughs> so it'll still be uh, UA. So, Unreal Adventure. Unreal Adventure. Instead of, instead of Ultimate so Adventure. So go to yes. unreal-adventure.com if you want to uh, find out more about it. So they were always the hosts? They I were. Mean, there was always their, yeah, I mean, the, the history. It was their baby? It was their baby. Okay. Um, so anyway, it says, uh, with the current changes, Christian and I have agreed to carry this one on because it transcends a faceless corporation. And we know there are a ton of fans that love this event as much as we do. Therefore, we decided to make it happen. There are a ton of things that had to happen in the background to make this work, and that continues, but we're proud to announce this is happening. The name may have changed, but the core of the event itself hasn't. It's the core of what we do, and that won't change. What you can expect, same format, same on-site management, same key players, including the cronies, vastly expanded video coverage, greater coverage from ancillary sources, sponsors on social, same opportunities for you to be a part of it, and uh, this is probably my favorite spot. Uh, so vastly extended uh, things leading up to like podcasts, social media, blah, blah, blah. So I'll help them out with that. We'll get them on the show to talk about it. What not to expect. Changing any existing core rules. Corporate greed. Lame watering down of the core event you love <laughs> if you make the cut. Uh, what's around the next bend? Yeah. That's it. More coming soon. So again, wow, uh, they love Motor Trend, don't they? I uh, did not say that at all. Mm, uh, I did. Unreal adventure.com. Wow. Do you uh, think Motor Trend will sue them for that? Uh, like that? I mean, I Hopefully they. I mean, it's not the same name. No, no, and they're not with the company anymore. No, and non competes don't work in California, so I mean, they can go do their own thing. Huh. I'm proud of them. I'm, I'm glad that they're trying to keep this one alive. If you've been a fan of UA and the magazines and all that, and uh, you wanted to see this event carry on, it uh, it's got the same people, just uh, different management now. So, good okay. luck, boys. But we'll try and get them on the show and talk about it. Uh, UnrealAdventure.com. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? <laughs> No. 
Uh, Ineos is uh, teasing Grenadine. people. Yeah. Nope. This is the uh, the quartermaster, the pickup truck. Okay. They showed off a V8 swap lifted and raced ready uh, Grenadier uh, at Goodwood. That. But this here All is right. the pickup. So this is the uh, kind of it looks like a safari truck, I right? I don't hate that. I like it. Yeah, I don't hate that. That you know what that is? That's a Tonka truck. That's not even real. That's a Tonka truck in someone's sandbox. So I guess they did a uh, a quartermaster and a uh, Grenadier. Uh, which is cool, and it's uh, here's some of the specs that you can expect from those. Uh, they've got portal axles, so uh, it's they're they're up taller, and so now eight hundred inches of ground clearance. Uh, ten, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it says because of the combination of the axles and larger tires, they gained ten point four inches of ground no. clearance. So now they have a, a total of twenty point two. Oh my lord! <laughs> which is which is silly. Uh-huh. Uh, and it says that they've already sold a couple of these similarly modified ones uh-huh. in the aftermarket. Um, so that's kind of funny. That uh, cannot be cheap. And interestingly enough, uh, they've got the BMW architecture for the uh, straight six. Mm-hmm. That's what comes in them. But uh, which, by all accounts, is a, a pretty badass engine. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, they took out the BMW powertrain bits and they put in a 6.2 liter GM V8. Oh, what? Which why? is kind of crazy. Wh- that's why. 425 re- reliability, easy. I mean, the you know, so push-run. okay. Apparently, I take back everything I said about uh, the BMW engine. It's crap. <laughs> yeah, 425 horsepower, <laughs> 461 pound feet of torque. So that's an increase of 120 horsepower and nearly 130 pound feet over the uh, gas engine. Oh. Hey, should we get our friend Bernard Leitner of Leitner Designs on the horn to talk about his experience with his uh, Grenadier? Or he can do a U review. Let's do it. How about that? Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, write, write that down, down. Yep. Bernard for U review. Mm-hmm. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No. <laughs> no, I don't like that one. You don't? know? I love that no, one. That I think one's, it's funny. That one's, that one's yeah. weird. Do you prefer this? No, 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 no. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, apparently, the 2025 Ram 1500 Rev electric pickup mm-hmm. has been spotted. Is this off the, the generator one? I 70 corridor in Colorado. Oh, the Charging. one that operates like a locomotive. Uh, this is the Rev. So this is the hybrid version, not the Ram Charger, which is the one with the onboard generator. Oh. oh. So uh, prototype looks like. Uh, well, I mean, it's a little bit weathered. Design looks uh, similar to what we've seen. There's a few production changes, things like that. Uh, but you can go check out that stuff on the uh, on the internet. And uh, have not seen the Ram charger yet, but uh, the Ram 1500 Rev has dual 250 kilowatt electric drive modules, so all wheel drive, 168 kilowatt hour battery pack, and a range of up to 350 miles with the I guess standard battery pack, while a optional 229 kilowatt hour battery pack will extend the range up to 500 miles. Oh my lord. Dude, 229. Okay, so so just to put that in perspective, that's 3.5 times as much batteries as my Aria has. Say, oh, yeah, that's significant. Well, again, it's heavier and it's a brick, but uh, well, I get it, but that's massive. That it, well, right. I was going to say what is the highest that we're aware of now as far as uh, range? It's 500 miles. I think the Rams it are is? probably up there, yeah. Okay. So here's what's interesting. Uh, when I've been looking at solar and dealing with all that stuff for the house, I've yeah. been learning a lot about that. Don't the, get ripped off. I feel like everyone no. I know has been ripped off by solar well, companies. Well, there's that's because you're going to do a, uh, a prepaid PPA, a lease, a PPA. That's how you get ripped off by solar. Uh, and interest rates are high if you're going to buy it. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But here's what's interesting. So that battery pack, right? 200 was it 229 is that what i said 229 i think yeah. okay so if you go to like a tesla powerwall right so looking at tesla powerwall that's 13.5 kilowatts the point is that if you have two powerwalls which is what i would do right mm-hmm. that's 27 kilowatt hours yeah my aria is 66 that ram is freaking 229 or whatever it is what I, i'm saying I, is my whole house can last off the powerwalls for like a day, and that Ram only goes 500 miles off 229 kilowatt hour about. I'm just trying to illustrate how massive a pack that is. Like, if you took, like, if you were looking for solar and you're like, oh, okay, um, I'm going to go and get, that's 13 Tesla Powerwalls. 13. <laughs> that's like an obscene Do amount. Do we know what it weighs? Nobody, no, we don't know anything about okay. it yet. It's just crazy. Anyway, it has a 800 volt DC fast charging at 350 kilowatt hours. So it needs that with a big battery. I, I just, right. I, when I'm learning about like discharging and bi directional charge, Johnny brought it up, what mm-hmm. my EV's battery is, what I get out of it, what a house takes to operate, and you're going, oh my 
lord, it's th- a lot. that's a lot. So just motivating yourself is more than X amount of times that your whole house uses. That seems a little obscene, doesn't it? You well, the motors in general, whether you're moving a vehicle or you're you've got an elevator, whatever it is. I mean, motors just take a lot of electricity. Period. Dude, I'm I'm telling you, it's uh, it's it's crazy. Anyway, uh, rumors around the 2025 Ram 1500 Rev talked about um, them having a hard time with getting the right tires. So that thing must be super heavy and all that torque. They mm. must just be roaching them like like fast. Interesting. So anyway. There's some durable tires. That speaks volumes. That's that, It'll be interesting. Hmm. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Oh, I cut oh, it short. Lightning. That's you guys, my favorite that's, one. That one I is know. overplayed. That, it's not overplayed. I do it like once every four or five weeks. You do it once a week. No, I do not. It seriously feels Dude, like Dude, you guys know that's not true. Uh, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, Hennessy Performance and Fox Factory have uh, teamed up, and they Wait are making- Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Fox Factory teamed up with- uh, Well, they built the Chevy, right? right? Okay. So now it's- it's What are they building with Hennessy? Okay. So Fox Factory and Hennessy have teamed up, and uh, they want to uh, basically salute the uh, Hemi V8 into extinction- <laughs> And they have a limited edition truck named the Mammoth 400. They'll produce uh, 250 units in 2024. And the Mammoth 400 will pay uh, homage to the Hemi V8, the final version, uh, 420 horsepower. And then through Fox Factory, uh, they get uh, Fox and Ride Tech suspension systems. And you get it in Viper Red, Viper White, or GTS Blue. You get it with stripes. It's Wait, lowered. Why is this cool again? Uh, just because uh, no, at 400 horsepower, I don't understand. Like modding, doing the mammoth, you know, the thousand horsepower TRX and all this stuff. What Hennessy's yeah. about big power. What 400 seems so lackluster. Well, that's just the the factory power plant. I guess they decided that they uh, wanted to do something reliable. No, we need to get John <laughs> on the horn. That's not. That doesn't sound like him. Uh, you still get a three year, thirty six thousand mile warranty. You get badging, a serial numbered engine plaque. He got a smoking deal on a bunch of. You think that's what it is? Five, seven hammies or something. <laughs> they just yeah. said, oh, we're going to do something yeah, cool Yeah, they're it. like, hey, we, you want to pick these up cheap? Listen, it's slammed on that right tech suspension. It looks awesome. Oh, okay. That does look good. That's a sport truck. No, it's, it, I, that's okay. what I'm talking about. That with 400 horsepower would be all sorts of fun. Okay. All right. You're right. You're right. I, I take back. Uh, I was thinking it was lifted. I mean, now no. they said right tech, they do lowered suspension. Their, their press releases are uh, all three of the red, white, and blue ones, so the uh, blue one with white stripes, the white one with blue stripes, and the red one with white stripes all lined up next to each other on a drag strip doing a burnout. Yeah. That's that's good. That, good on them. I'm okay. good with that. All right. I take back everything Listen, I said yet again, V8. and that is, that's cool. You again, know, the 400 horsepower, kind of whatever today, but like that is a, that's a good looking truck. So the price is apparently thirty nine nine ninety five on top of the cost of the base Ram 1500. Oh, what? 40 grand on top of a base Ram. Yeah. What's wrong with that? It's lower like, suspension. I told you you got a twenty two inch wheels. Yeah. You can get the supercharger if you want it. You don't have to. So is that more than the forty? Yes. Hard pass. I think it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Hard pass. Hey lighting, have you heard? No. No, I didn't hear. What you got? All right, so uh, Ram recently did a patent. If you remember that they had the uh, 1500 Revolution concept last year, uh, and in that truck they had uh, jump seats, which basically made that a third row. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of makes sense because pickup truck cabs are so big, you don't need a mega cab. So, yeah, they scooted the rear seats forward and and then had fold-down seats? There's jump seats against the uh, rear bulkhead. At least that's what is being shown. No, that's not as big as like a mega cab. No, so it's it's like a standard uh, Ram cab. Hmm. So, although mega cab for sure, you could put a couple extra seats Yeah, yeah, but explain the patent because I don't understand what's patentable about that. They just put extra seats Yeah, I mean, you remember your old Chevy S10 or your Ranger? Those all had uh, jump seats, right? Sure. Uh, But those were uh, side-facing, whereas the Ram jump seats are forward-facing. Okay. So on the patent, it actually shows those jump seats behind second-row captain's chair, so that'd be a two plus two plus two. Okay. But if you think about it, how many families like having a pickup truck, and if they could fit an extra couple of kids of it, right? No, no, it's a great idea. I'd like to see the execution of that, but I can't figure out what's patentable about that. What is new and novel about that? Well, well no, I guess no, it is new Nobody's and novel, ever done that before. Right. Nobody's taken a two-row full-size pickup truck yeah. and added additional seats behind the back seat. But is that patentable? Like the way they mount the seats or something could be patentable, or I don't know. 
I don't oh. know. I'm not a patent attorney. I'm just telling you that they've filed documents with the United States uh, Patent and Trademark Office. Okay, so got we'll, it. We'll see where it goes. All right. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? I don't watch the news because I'm a kid. No, I haven't. Uh, I'm not aware. So lovers of the uh, 80 series Toyota Land Cruiser, love them. The 96s, 97s, um, might be 95s also, unicorns, because you can get the uh, front, rear, and center locking differential. It was the last of the solid axle Land Cruisers. And they're going for silly money right now. However, silly money meaning over fifty grand, sixty grand. No, not quite that kind Around of silly there? money until okay. now. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, apparently, there was a listing online, mm-hmm. uh, clean California title. Uh, this particular eighty years white with a tan interior, only had forty seven hundred miles on the odometer. What? So uh, they put on bring a trailer. Do you think it crossed the hundred thousand threshold? No, I think it's probably. Just shy, probably like 96 or something. So this uh, Toyota, this uh, Land Cruiser was listed back in 2023. The auction reached $165,000. Oh, what? And the high bidder failed to pay for it in the end. Okay. So So, has it sold? So it went back up on uh, the auction block. Mm -hmm. $165,000. Well, it doesn't matter because he didn't buy it. So it's irrelevant. It could have been a million dollars. So this particular one did sell. It sold for a cool one hundred and seventy thousand. <laughs> no, no, no way. I mean, look, forty seven hundred miles. That is new. That's which, that's which, new. But but check this out. Uh, this is the fifth eighty series that made more than a hundred grand on bring a trailer, and it sets a record for for this uh, generation. What? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. That's crazy. Why money. were there how? How many they're were special. produced? I, who knows how many? I, I have no idea. But it, huh. they're they're magical. They were there were when Toyota made high quality vehicles, the highest quality you could buy, great reputation. That engine goes forever because it, it is a gear drive. It doesn't have a timing belt in the front. That's why they use them all over the world. Land Cruiser made a difference, like you know, Land Cruiser name, Land mm-hmm. Cruiser City, like Johnny said. This is, goes through the uh, third degree durability testing, all that kind of stuff. These vehicles are unbelievable, and people who have them today who go overlanding in them, uh, they're just awesome on the trail, and they're just special. At 170 grand, are you going to really take that overlanding? No, that's going to sit in your garage. Well, this one, but I mean, there's right. a gazillion oh, out yeah, there that yeah, people yeah. are actually out sure. using, and they're fantastic off road. It's about the size of a Wrangler JL with uh, three rows. So, yeah, there okay. you go. Hmm. Uh, lighting, have you heard? No. No. Negative. So this is sad, sad news from Down Under. We'll stick with the uh, Land Cruiser theme. Remember we were talking about the uh, FJ70 um, that was available and they just redesigned it down there, uh, freshened it up. It's the old Land Cruiser that yeah. they still sell, that they've been selling for like you know, 25, 30 years. They're cool. It is. Yep, yep. Uh, 40 years, actually. So the 4.5 liter turbo diesel V8, which was like the option to have, Toyota made an announcement, said, sadly... Changing regulation and community expectations have led to the oil burner's demise. Production will continue for a while to clear out the backlog of orders, but they're not going to accept any new requests or any vehicles with the legendary 1VD-FTV engine. The four-door wagon will be the first, then the two-door troop carrier, which are technically SUVs, and then uh, the truck version uh, down the line. So the pickups should be shipped to buyers by Q4 Mm -hmm. 2025. So once again, regulations have killed our beloved V8 platform. Yeah. You know what you get? The five-speed manual gearbox. Get that on the other engine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool, I guess. Yeah, but seriously. You you want the diesel, you don't get the diesel. I want the the diesel and the the five-speed. Yeah. That's, That's what I want. Yeah. It still has those chrome mirrors that aren't power that you have to <laughs> wiggle your arm. There's got wind wings on the windows. The stuff. simpler times. Oh, uh, the simpler times. Listen, the replacement engine or the optional engine is a is a four cylinder and uh, gets a six speed automatic, but they'll let you option it with the five speed for the sh- row for yourself people. Mm-hmm. Torque drops by 37 pound feet when you go into the four cylinder to 332. And it's a 2.8 liter turbo diesel also. Uh, it's, just, it's just not sexy like, no. the, like the V8. Do we have a moment of silence for uh, for the FJ70 V8? How much you want? I don't know. That's probably it. Okay. <laughs> hey, Lighting, have you heard? No, 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 it's not that. It's me. 
Nu. No, no, ni. You're not doing it properly. Ni. 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 That's it. That's it. You've got it. Ni. Okay. No, I've not heard. What Here, you here's the uh, here's the sad, sad news of uh, Cummins. If you remember, uh, Cummins got fined. Yeah. Well, so one point six seven billion or something like that. Yeah. Yep. I am uh, very familiar with that. So Cummins two point oh four billion for six hundred thousand pickups with uh, two point oh. Wait, I thought it was one point six. It was two point oh four billion. So uh, for their emissions, quote unquote, cheat software. Sure. So GM got caught with their vehicles emitting 10% more CO2 than advertised. And you guys, you've even said it. You've tested stock vehicles that don't meet emissions. I think that I told you some of that off air. Oh. <laughs> All right, we'll bleep that no, entire no, no, thing. No, 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 I'm going to leave it on because I think I it's, it's I, on the I, open now. I didn't mean you. I meant some guy. Some people in the aftermarket who, from who, who tests, who tests yes. uh, brand new vehicles mm-hmm. may have noticed a discrepancy in the emissions. Anyway, uh, GM has 10% more CO2 on 5.9 million vehicles. So you would think, okay, 600,000 for 2 billion, then 5.9 billion must be uh, a zillion. Yeah. Nope, 146 million. That number does not compute. Uh, Yeah, so sounds like uh, someone somebody was making an example of somebody and yeah. somebody is not somebody else. I don't... Or they valued the fine I, differently, like like per vehicle fine was calculated differently. I, I We're know. not privy to that, no, obviously. No. Interesting. Uh, what a world this, we this live stuff in. Stuff is weird. These you know, people like hate. Can, can us I can I tell some, a weird backstory? Truck people. So you know, uh, I'm going to tell a little banks. Uh, 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 I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit. So you know the Monster Ram yep. for the the Cummins. So Banks sells them for uh, 2007 through 2024 trucks, okay? And we have a CARB EO. Mm -hmm. It's 50 state compliant from Mm -hmm. 2013 to 2018 and from 2019 to 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those year ranges are covered except for 07 to 12. 07 to 9 is a weird one. We're probably not going to pursue that. But here's where I'm going with the story. 2010 to 2012... We've bought two trucks and we sent them to the SEMA garage to get the emissions uh, work done so we can pass carbs, so we can sell the things in all 50 states. We cannot find a 2010, a 2011, or a 2012 that will pass the emissions test bone stock. Not one. We put out the APB. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking for these vehicles on Facebook, on social media, everywhere. We cannot find a single 2010, 2011, or 2012 Ram 6.7 liter that will pass an emissions test bone stock. Then how are these people getting their their registration renewed? No, 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 no. That's a different test. Hmm. That's a test that tests just like, this is a lot more rigorous, okay? This is the same test that they would have had to pass to get EPA compliance, Okay. all right? Why they're different? So what you have to do is you, first, if you want to get your aftermarket, your Holman's thingamajigger that goes on the engine, right? And and, and it could affect uh, emissions compliance, so you have to get it tested. Before you can bolt your Holman's thingamajigger on the engine, you have to take the vehicle and get it to pass the baseline right, test, baseline. Yep. the baseline test that, that uh, Cummins agreed to or Ram agreed to at the time it was sold, okay? That they stamped the VIN on it. You get the baseline, pass that, and then you add your part, and it has a certain amount of wiggle room. If, you, if you're if you inside that wiggle room, you can get your CARB executive order, and you can sell it in all 50 states, including California. We can't get one that will even baseline. It won't even pass bone stock. Yeah. There, we found one. It's owned by Fleece, our buddy Braden at Fleece, and uh, he's a friendly competitor. So we, I called him up. I said, Braden, word has it, you have the only 2012 that will pass. And he goes, that's true. You can't have it. <laughs> okay. And I was like, okay, awesome. And he was, he's super cool about it. He's like, we're using it. It's booked because everyone knows that it's the only one that will pass and everyone wants to use it. Mm. And like, isn't it nuts? So we've purchased two of them already. And we may have to like get one and completely rebuild the engine and the emissions equipment just to get it to pass bone stock. So something fishy was going on at the time that these were sold. Are you saying fishy with who? No. (laughs) I'm just saying 
that we've bought one with as low as like 50,000 miles and it won't pass. Every The DPF's in great shape. Like all this stuff is in, won't pass. What's up with that? All right, great place to end the show. <laughs> Well, I don't. Uh, I don't think this show would pass an emissions test either. <laughs> no, especially not after Chili Dogs. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Some vehicles may have been harmed during the making of this podcast.